Let's create an advanced item in Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be creating an advanced item in Minecraft. And what does advanced item mean? Well, what I call advanced items are items that have their custom item class. So in our mod items class, before we have the citrine and the raw citrine, those are new items and advanced items would be items where it's new, whatever the item name is item. So in our item package, we're going to right click new package called custom. And then inside of there, we're going to right click new Java class called dowsing rod item. Right. So what I usually advise is that the class name ends with the word item. That is simply to signify that this is an item and this will extend the item class. So making sure that this is net Minecraft world item. And then we're just going to auto complete this with the tab key. Let's hover over this and create constructor matching super. And now no more errors should be present. Now in general, what is really cool is that we have access to the item class. So what I can do is I can middle mouse button click on this. And now I can see all of the different methods that we are able to override here in our custom item. You can see there are so many things in here. It's really cool. And we can basically override any of those methods. And that's not all of it. If I actually go a little bit further to the iForge item interface and middle mouse button click on this, you can see that there are even more methods that I can override and it just almost never ends. It is really freaking cool. And to basically see this, what you can do is you can just put in override and then you should be able to, well, be able to see all of the different methods and where they come from, either from the iForge item interface or from the item class. And you can see there are a lot of things here. So usually what I can recommend is uh, be open to experimentation. Try out a bunch of stuff. What, what is hurt enemy? Let's just, you know, try it out, see what it does. So you can click on the super and sometimes it has some relevant information in the comments here. This one is actually not that relevant, but for ex example, here is correct tool for drops. Checks whether or not this item can harvest the given block. Something that's really cool. There's of course a bunch of other stuff. So it can I just highly recommend taking a look at this. Now we're not going to use the hurt enemy method. We're going to use the use on method. And what is the general idea of the dowsing rod? Well, the dowsing rod, what I want to do with this is I'm going to right click on a block and then we're going to check every block that is below this block that we just right clicked. And if we find one block that is valuable, so we're going to define what a valuable block is in just a moment, then what I want to do is I want to basically output the coordinates of that block and what block it is. I'm actually going to copy over most of this stuff. Now I'm still going to explain every line here. All of this is available to you in the GitHub repository and in individual just as well. So just go into the description below and you can copy from there as well. So we're going to first of all copy over the is valuable block method and the output valuable coordinates method. They should yield no errors and you can see the is valuable block method simply takes in a block and returns a boolean. So we're simply checking whether or not something is true or false. So we're basically checking whether or not the block that we are passing in here as a parameter is going to be valuable. And it is valuable if it is coal ore, copper ore, diamond ore or iron ore. That's the general idea. That's all that this Boolean expression does really. It just checks whether or not the block is any of these ones. And if it is, then it returns true. Otherwise it returns false. The output valuable coordinates simply outputs the valuable coordinates to the player that we're passing in. So you can see players.send message with a new text component. And then all of this jazz basically just to make this a little bit nicer, basically the formatting. Well, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to copy over the contents of the on use method. Then once again, I will explain each line from top to bottom. So what is this? Well, first of all, we're checking whether or not we are on the client. So via the context, we're going to get the level or the world and we're checking, hey, are we on the client? If we are, we're going to go inside of this if statement and all of this is then executed on the client only. Usually this is not the case. Usually we want to be on the server, but in this case, it's fine to be on the client. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, get me the position that we just clicked. Get me the player. We're just saving those in two variables here. Same with the Boolean found block which we're initializing to false because of course we haven't found a block at that point. And then we get to the very interesting thing and that is this for loop here. So this for loop basically just goes from the block that we found and goes down, 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 down all the way to negative 64 basically until we hit the end of the world at the very bottom, checks each block if the block is valuable. So we're starting at zero going until we hit the Y level of the block we clicked plus 64. Now this might be a little confusing. The general idea is that because we're basically subtracting our position, so let's say our position is 50, right? Then what we want to do is when we start at zero, now we're at position 50. If i is 1, now we're at position 49. 
48 and so on and so forth. So we're going, going down. So we're going down, 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 down until when I gets to be the Y level of the position clicked, we're at position zero. And then we want to go down 64 more times to reach negative 64. That's how this for loop works. Basically, we're checking every block below the block that we've just clicked and evaluating whether or not it is valuable. If it is valuable, well, then we'll just output the coordinates. We're going to say found block is true. And then we're going to break out of the for loop. After we're out of the for loop, we also checking if no block was found. And if that is the case, then we're going to output this. So basically a translatable component. You should use those translatable components wherever possible. We're going to copy this in just a second. And then we're going to use this in the en underscore usjson file. That is then basically output. No valuables were found. And that would then be it. Let's actually immediately add this to the en underscore usjson file before I forget it. So this is going to be no valuables found. There you go. And just for the hell of it, we can also already add this, the dousing, dousing underscore rod. There you go. The translation for the item as well, because we're going to have to make that in just a moment as well. Of course, we have to register it. And that would pretty much be all that we really need to do. Now, what's very important is that if your custom class is gray right here and the public, you know, the constructor here is gray as well, then what that usually means is that you have forgotten to well, create a new instance of this class because let's go into our mod items and let's just copy over the raw citrine. I'm going to call this the dousing underscore rod. And of course, same for the name dousing underscore rod. And now usually you would be like, well, I mean, that's going to be fine. We're, we're done. Well, now we're not done because this is not a new item. This is a new dousing rod item. And this, you know, sometimes happens. I mean, it has happened to me as well. But now you can see if I go in here, that the class text is now white and the text of the constructor is now yellow to signify that it has been used somewhere. And here we're basically using the dousing rod item. So if you have an advanced item, make sure that you are also creating a new instance of this. Now for this one, we also want to be actually have a durability. Let's say something like 16. That's going to be fine. And then the last line here, which I have actually not talked about, this one, hurt and break, should be fairly self-explanatory, but still, we're going to basically damage the item stack that we've just right-clicked with by exactly one. So we're going to add one damage to it, and after, you know, 16 damage, the item is going to be destroyed, and we're going to broadcast the break event here. So that's the general idea. This is just how to hurt or how to damage an item stack, basically. But just like with any other item, we still need an item model. So let's just copy over this and say dousing underscore rod. And then same here, dousing underscore rod. And then, of course, we also need the item model. But no worries, we'll just copy this one over. So dousing rod, there you go. And that would pretty much be all that we need to do to add the dousing rod to the game. So one example of a custom advanced item here. So I guess... Let's just see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. And as you can see, the dousing rod has been successfully added to the game. So let's see. There we go. We actually found some already. No valuables found here. But there we have copper ore, copper ore. So we're finding a lot of stuff here. Iron ore, even, let's see, coal ore. And then no valuables found, no valuables found. That is, of course, totally fine. But there you go. So we can basically find some stuff with the dousing rod. If we're in survival mode, then we should also see that we're basically... Well, I mean, subtracting the durability each time I click and then at some point, broop, there it is. It basically breaks the item, right? So that is something that's really cool. And like I said, this is one example of an advanced item. Of course, there's, I mean, thousands of things that you could do. I just hope that this was an illustrative example for you. And this would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.